I was reading this article today on the register about some very strange traffic with NordVPN. Going to some very random domains, made up of hexadecimals on the .com, .xyz, and the .info, and the .info is not actually mentioned there, but I've had a look around the company network that I work for, and uh, yeah, it does appear that the info is related. But yeah, I'll discuss this news article and show you some of the information that I found on the company network. Now, it doesn't seem to have affected anyone directly within my company, but it has affected a lot of users, and users from around the world, but most of them are in Australia. Don't know how much that says about Australia, really, but maybe it is a lot of the people with VPN, or NordVPN specifically, are in Australia, as far as visitors and people within the company I work for. I won't take too much information directly from the register article, but yeah, it's talking about these garbage domains, connections to garbage domains made from visitors on this reader's network. But what is a VPN? Well, let's use NordVPN's articles on how to explain this. So a virtual private network. So it is a means of privacy in protecting your IP from the endpoints that you're connecting to, providing you an encrypted tunnel. So it does actually have a use if you're connecting via a free Wi-Fi. You can potentially avoid some uh, nefarious activity that goes on there. And it does have a use in the business world, allowing staff to connect to the company's network. So yeah, they're pointing out your device and you connect via an encrypted tunnel to the VPN's servers, and then go onwards to the internet. So as far as any internet site goes, all the IP address they have is the VPN. They don't have your IP address. So while it does have its uses, it's not really something I'm too interested in. Personally, if I was looking at uh, trying to hide my IP address, I would look at using Tor, which is free. Although there are certain activities you can't do over it. I'm not going to mention them because it may get this YouTube video demonetized. Although I was only going to go for the basic ads anyway, but yeah, anyway, it's the whole principle of it. So frequently asked questions about NordVPN. Will I experience a DNS leak with NordVPN? We have our own DNS servers, so there should be no leaks. If you still experience a DNS leak, please make sure you're connected to a VPN and clean the cache and cookies from your browser. I thought that was a useful point to read out, that any connections that are going on with Nord should be done via their DNS service. So we wouldn't expect any dodgy activity. Not to say this is the first time it's happened, a post from 10 months ago noted some suspicious domains, although not quite as odd as what we're seeing now. Oh, highly dodgy going to the Express. Ooh, dodgy paper, that one. But not all of these are particularly suspect, although suspect this person going there because presumably they've not gone there. That domain here, which is unpronounceable, was known as a command and control server at one point. Actually predated this post though, so anyway, I don't know what to read into that specifically. I just want to point out these things may have happened before. Let's look at the original article about this, and it was written by Ryan Neems. So I've got links to these articles in the video description, so you're more than happy to look at these. Uh, there's a few things I can't actually link to, but I'll come on to those later in the video. So he says he's a proud owner of these very random domains, but why purchase those? Well, because there is some dodgy traffic going to it. This dodgy activity was flagged by OpenDNS and Umbrella, which is a DNS service provided by Cisco. So it looked like command and control traffic, but, they, but it was being blocked. So he checked out who owned them and found that they weren't actually registered. So he went and registered them. By registering them, he then found his logs were filling up with information that said the user agent was Nord App Android. The Nord App on Android version 9, Android 5, and within Apple. So yeah, it all seems to be post information and rather specific information as well. So clearly the traffic was not intended to him and he did actually mention it to NordVPN. So he contacted NordVPN and they said it will be fixed in the most recent release of NordVPN. And as a bonus, they gave him three years for free for reporting the issue. Let's take a look at some of the information provided by Cisco Umbrella. Unfortunately, I can't link to this as you actually have to be, well, a subscriber of their services. So we have traffic logged by OpenDNS for the past month. And for this very random domain, it's all fairly steady until it suddenly shoots up there. So yeah, we've got... Uh, what, around a thousand visits per day, 1,200 peaking. And at one time it was known as command and control. 
So I believe that was one of the domains that was purchased. So yeah, I think that was F5 ending with FFC5. Looks pretty much like it. So it's all fairly similar volumes of activity, so 600 to about 1,000 visits per day. Also recognized as command and control. You know, same thing, got another random domain name. Yep, 1,000 to 1,800 visits per day. But some of these are actually registered, and look, this one's been registered since November 2018. What I haven't shown you, though, is if I scroll down, you'll see these co-occurrences. They're all very similar, very similar, randomly named hexadecimal names. And we have .xyz.info, and yeah, I could just go on and on. It's all very similar volumes of traffic. Yeah, this one I had the .info and the .xyz. Yeah, basically the same name and very similar traffic patterns. Yeah. What a coincidence. What a coincidence. And so where are most of the requests coming from? So mostly from the United States. Pretty much from right around the world. Not so much from China and Hong Kong. So what is on one of these pages? Nothing, just says bad gateway. But I thought I'd try that from Hong Kong. So the reason for taking a look at what exists from Hong Kong is that different websites might be served up depending on the geolocation of the source IP. And in some cases, despite the website not existing, it might actually exist in certain regions. Let's say, for example, inside the Great Firewall of China. A website of that random name may exist and would then have the NordVPN client connecting to it. I'll show you the information I have for the corporate network for the company I work at. So it is recognized as Cisco as being either command and control or proxy anonymizer. I'm not sure whether Cisco actually know for sure what this is, or whether they're just looking at certain patterns. They may recognize this very random name with these very weird traffic patterns is likely to be malicious. So that is why it's being classified as command and control. Although it's also interesting that they recognized it as proxy, correctly recognized it as proxy. And in terms of traffic volume, well, we see a connection that mimics a workday, with Saturday and Sunday being, well, pretty much no activity and more connections during the week. So that's a mixture of what we had allowed and blocked, so most of the connections were actually getting through. That sort of volume of activity would be very similar for anyone using OpenDNS or Umbrella for their DNS provider. Let's go back to the registers article. So there's a number of API calls within the HTTPS encrypted traffic. Hitting his new domains, including requests like this. Uh, yeah, that just goes on and on and on and on. <laughs> very, um, perhaps very specific. The post I'm seeing is concerning because there's a field called Renew Token, which appears to be unique. And a spokeswoman from NordVPN told us, I would like to assure you that we have not observed any irregular behaviour that could in any way support the theory of our applications being compromised by a malicious actor. Well, I suppose that's fair enough, but what if you programmed it yourself under pressure from a certain government? She added, such domains are used as an important part of our workaround in environments and countries with heavy internet restrictions to prevent such requests from contacting the domains which aren't owned by us. We have modified our URI scheme and all URLs are being validated, so the problem as such will never occur. It is also important to note that no sensitive data is being sent or received through these addresses. There's more information about the exact post request that clients are sending to that server. I'm not really sure what they're going on about with the gzip here, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's expecting large payload from the server. It's just a very standard thing to say for a connection. The client is simply saying, I will accept gzip, nothing more than that. So what to think about all this? Well, I'm certainly suspicious. But just to finish off, I was scrolling through NordVPN and they said, what's ping of death and how to protect yourself? And I'm thinking, ping of death? Ping of death? That was a 1990s exploit. In fact, specifically from 1996. So affected operating systems would be Windows 95 and Windows 3.1. Surely they must be joking and putting this article about. But no, they're actually talking about it as if it's a modern day threat. So it's talking correctly there about the overflow of a 65535 byte packet. So you would send overlapping segments of an ICMP packet and overflow the 65535 byte allocation. 
and certain operating systems from 24, 25, 26 years ago wouldn't know what to do with it and would blue screen a deaf. Is IPv6 affected? Well, bizarrely, some of these vulnerabilities with IPv4 were repeated again with IPv6. Anyway, that was just really strange to see a reminder about such an old attack. How to prevent ping of death attacks? I mean, update your system. Update it from what, 1990? Yeah, done. Firewall. Uh, anyway, turn ICMP off. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, what are your thoughts on NordVPN? Would you still trust them? Do you think they were pressured to do this by some government? Or do you think this is a whole null issue and someone was just doing something stupid in the program? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you all later.